Okay, so um, hello everybody, and it's good to see you again. I don't know where this last month's gone, but it certainly went very quickly. Um, tonight, our subject um, is, um, what's the point of spiritual guides? And obviously, we'd like you to express, you know, your feelings and your thoughts to us, keep the discussion going. And um, does anyone to start, and let me just first of all, just introduce John to you, um, who's going to, obviously, who joins us. Um, I just want to ask you, does anyone um, would like to start off this discussion, you know, about what you, what you feel about spirit guides? But before we go on, just please remember that they are, uh, you know, our own personal thoughts and we're all entitled to them and nobody's wrong and everybody's right, in my opinion. OK, so anyone like to start us off with that idea? Yeah, June. Thank you. Hello, June. <laughs> Maybe not. Yes, here she comes. Our video's off as well, June, so I don't know if you're having problems just now. Uh, anyone else like to start us off? <laughs> <laughs> we can come back to June, so. Yeah. She's obviously struggling so, a bit, so Daniel okay. can message her. Yeah, working yeah. with her on that. Okay, thanks, Dan. Hey. Oh, Caroline. Caroline, sorry. Hello. Well, Hi, take, Caroline. I'll take over from June. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> well, if it wasn't for spirit guides, I wouldn't be here, basically. Uh -huh. uh, spirit came to me um, and, uh, yeah, um, introduced themselves. Oh, and, um, yeah, so I... I think you've also used the phrase, Simone, about being a reluctant medium. Um, that's that's what I have been. You know, I've sort of come in resisting all the way, um, getting better at being less resistant. But no, I think, I mean, I, I don't think we could do our job if we didn't have spirit guides because we wouldn't have uh, that extra communication. You know, yes, we connect with loved ones and friends, but I believe that, Connecting with spirit guides gives us a wider wisdom, it gives okay. us a guidance um, and uh, um, can be profound on a, um, not just to one person, but to a, to a mass, to a, to a group. Um, I think that's where spirit groups um, try to help us and teach us and educate us. Wow, okay. Thank you. Thank you for that, Carolyn. So, Carolyn, sorry, just to follow up on that. Yeah. Could you describe what you see a spirit guide as being? Yeah. For those that perhaps don't understand the concept. I see what, what well, to my belief, it's they are entities that have left the planet. Maybe they haven't even been on the planet, but they are now in spirit. But they are usually choose to be um, our teachers. You know, I, I believe that when we get to heaven, we can choose. Like I could choose to continue on being a nurse if I wanted to uh, or, or whatever. But uh, I, I believe spirit guides and maybe we make a pact with them before we even get here that they are going to work with us and help us. Um, so they have chosen to uh, be in connection with humans at a tangible level where they can help guide us where they can use us as a channel to talk to people, um, where they can get the message across that they need to get across. So I think we can use them for ourselves, but I think we can also be used by them to help others. And, and do you think everybody has these or is it just mediums, whether it's evidential mediums or, or healing mediums, or is it every human being has access to these guides? I believe so. Uh, I do believe that, like everything, I mean, some people are a really good secretary. Uh, some people are a really good nurse. There are some people who have a, a better ability or haven't yet developed the ability to be able to commune directly with them. I mean, I've had to go through at least 10 years of Arthur Finney College uh, trainings to develop uh, something that I think I had inherent in me, but I didn't know. 
And so I had to be introduced and, and had to learn about how to work and how to develop, because I believe working with my spirit team has helped me as a person develop my soul, my spirit. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I can I can see that. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Carolyn. Yeah. Okay, June. Hi. <laughs> Oh, we can't hear you, June. No. You don't seem to be muted, but it's maybe your microphone. No. Daniel, any idea? So she's obviously struggling tonight. It's not like June to be muted. Right. No. So June, your audio is open. It just seems to be a speaker on your end, maybe your computer. Do you have anything plugged in or do you need to unplug? We'll come back to June. Yeah, so come back. You, you okay. can keep working on it, June, and <laughs> just jump in whenever you're ready. So there we go. Yeah, yeah that's good. Okay. Anybody okay. else? Yeah. So any I, other I, ideas? So I just find um, the idea of um, the spirit guides um, a, a quite a difficult concept for me because I'm not one of these people that sees an individual because I used to when I first came into the movement I used to believe that I would see an American Indian or a nun or whatever um, but now as I've hopefully moved on a little bit in in my understanding I don't see the need for that I I'm just aware of a collective mind a collective consciousness that I work with but I have a, my dilemma is not the fact that there there are spirit minds that work with me or help try to help me anyway um but it's this idea of our fifth principle of personal responsibility versus spirit guides you know how far do we go with this you know do we you know because i hear so many people say oh you know my guide tells me not to do this not to do that or and so on and surely the whole purpose of our being on this earth is to to learn somehow and I, I know that there have been times I've asked the spirit world for information and they've said to me, we're not allowed to tell you that, you know, and I, I do feel that there comes a point where people relinquish responsibility for themselves by saying it's come from a guide or a helper. I actually don't even I don't even like the word guide. I prefer the word influence yeah. because I feel I'm open to influence. Um, but I, I just feel that there is this dilemma for me between relinquishing responsibility and our fifth principle of personal responsibility. And where where do we draw the line? You know, do I do I do what they tell me, or do I do what I want to do? And then they and then they say you should have done it another way. But in any event, surely it's my life and my mistakes. So how far do we go with that? So what does anybody else feel about that? Yeah, just maybe, I know David's keen to get in as well, but just to come back on that. Oh, I didn't see your hand, David. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, it's no, on your bookcase. Okay. <laughs> no problem. I Something I was just going to say, just for, for David jumps in, is that I, I, I tend to agree, but another thing I'm always very conscious of is each one of us in our own lives change throughout our lifetime. Mm. And, and I see spirit guides, for want of a better expression, as, as those entities in the spirit world, uh, we always hear this expression, like attracts like, and I think that's very true, mm -hmm. that if we are interested mm -hmm. in something here in this world, then we're going to attract a like mind from the spirit side of life, who's going to influence us and help us. And I think that happens within our mm -hmm. chosen professions, within our careers. So we're going to get teachers, yeah. we're going to get whatever we do in our lives, we'll have people corresponding in the spirit world that will support us. And I think the same goes with mediumship. But, you know, for anybody who's involved in developing their mediumship, they will know that changes over time. So I think it's only right that our spirit influences and guides uh, do change as we change. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know there's, with some people, I think there's always a constant one 
entity that's always with us. I'm still unsure about that. Mm, I'm not against so. that idea, mm. but I think, you know what, I like the idea of things changing and people moving on because mm. there is only so much that one entity, one spirit can teach us. So yeah. just a thought. Thanks. David. Hi, everybody. Hi, hello. <laughs> Uh, very interesting uh, uh, concept, I have to say, and I'm leaning out because there is me, the teacher who teaches such things, and then there is me, David, still on a journey to actually experience and, and, and to make sense of all that. So there are two different um, roles here. Um, uh, just to come to you, John, um, I said that once in a group, like attracts like, and then the lady looked at me and she said, are you telling me now that I'm evil? Because she used to attract spirit people who were naughty ones and stuff. So in a way, it's like, what do you do? But my problem with the guides is what is mine created and what is real? You know, when I heard mm -hmm. Carolyn speak, she said the guide introduced himself or herself to me. Mm -hmm. I think this is something completely different than... I am seeking my guide, you know, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. they come and if they create themselves and uh, if there is intelligence behind it, then it would be confirmed by others that it is really that one entity or that mindset. But often I feel we, we're losing a bit that um, uh, realistic approach, reasonable approach, who is really a guide? And what is my wish to have as a guy? I know. Mm. And there yeah. I struggle a little bit. So, And I think yeah. with that, though, David, how, how I would see that is that we have different personas within ourselves. So when we're looking for help and when we're extending our own thoughts, uh, we're actually asking ourselves for help, essentially. That, that's, mm -hmm. that's the base. That's the base from which we're starting. So a consciousness, I, or I guess our subconscious, is telling us what to do, is inspiring us, guiding us. That's not a separate entity. Yeah. That's us mm -hmm. that's doing that. And I know certainly in developing mediumship, you know, people will become aware of an energy, a, a personality, but actually that's themselves, whether you call that their alter ego or whatever. But then you do go beyond that. And mediumship's exactly the same you know <clears throat> when you you've developed mediumship you'll understand that be, to begin with you don't really know what energy you're communicating with and essentially it's a psychic energy it's that which is you and you are sensing that psychic energy of another person but then it moves on beyond that where that entity that spirit entity communicates and you have to experience that to understand that and i think the same goes with spirit guides and communicators is that it is a different energy it is a different intelligence uh but i think essentially yeah in many aspects when we're when people talk about guides they're actually not talking about another spirit energy they're talking about themselves mm. um, yeah I'd, I'd go along with that yeah okay june hello can you hear me this time yes lovely thank you <laughs> I bought a new computer and oh. I can't set it up properly. So oh. I've gone back to my old one and this one works fine. Oh, great. Oh, <laughs> I apologise for all the interaction. No, 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 don't worry. Right. I have a more complex opinion, I suppose, because my very first memory was my little hand reaching up from my cot to take the finger of the gentleman who has been my companion all my life. I've never known any different. I've never known that they weren't there. And I used to go down to the graveyard and talk to the people who were still in the graveyard and things like that. I've never known any different. Mm -hmm. They are people to me. Mm -hmm. And they kept me alive. They saved my life more than once. So I've never known any different. It's only recently in trying to understand what most people mean by a spirit guide that I've 
communicated in the way that is acceptable to most SNU people. And I've not found that easy. You know, you want a communicator, you want to give you, give you a personality, mm -hmm. um, um, what they did. You don't want me to talk to them. You want me to prove that they exist, which is a different concept. I know they exist. Mm -hmm. I've been there, I've seen them. But so I do mm -hmm. look upon it as a different way of appreciating that there is a discarnate life. Whereas mm -hmm. being taught by them, it's, I, I, I receive instruction in the sense of, if I don't say it right, they tell me off. So if I'm trying to speak to you, about an important philosophical point, if I don't use the right words or express it the right way, I'm stopped and corrected and I carry on. So mm -hmm. I'm not awfully good at giving you what you would consider a loved one who has passed. They're there. Oh yes, hello. But we don't have the level of communication but in the understanding that I have with what you consider a spirit guide. Mm. So I watch the world in a different way. I've never known it to be any different. Okay. And mm. as I said, the man that is with me, and it happens to be a gentleman, there are ladies as well, happens to be a gentleman, has been there from day one. Mm. I've never known it to mm. be any other way. Yeah. So yeah, I've had to case, yeah, change my thinking. Is it my mind? Well, of course it is, because they are there in my mind. And then I had to learn that the mind is everybody's. Yeah. I had to learn to be an individual person, to become a person in order to communicate. And that is the other way around. So that's what's taken my journey to understand the individuality that I have to express here. Mm -hmm. And that has been my emotional journey. Mm -hmm. Communion with the spirit world for me is easy. The mm -hmm. discarnate mind is no different than mine. So I just do look at it slightly differently. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Jane. That that's sense. great. Thanks a lot. Marie Therese. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Um, yeah, I have to agree with June. Um, I have also these contacts from uh, childhood on, and um, it was very strange for me to, uh, yeah, uh, find out that not everybody had this. And it took me on a journey that, um, while when I was in my my young uh, age, uh, I felt every, all, all things from everybody, but I had also learned to um, make a distinguish what was me and what was a uh, spirit world, because for me, it's also one and the same. It's like being just a receiver and I had to explore who am I and what what I am receiving and um, that's also yeah took me on a long road to mm -hmm. um, to make it workable for myself and live in here on the planet almost um, and accept myself for it because it was really strange to 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 feel this and to talk with all these energies and wisdom, et cetera, et cetera. So I really have to, had to break up myself from this and to go on a, a journey of um, experiencing what it was to not be in contact with them. And that felt as amputated. It felt like I was missing an arm. So if, if I was wanting to paint, but I couldn't paint, so I was also living a half a life. So um, then I also distance uh, took a distance from it because I I I noticed what I 
could do with this, but I didn't want to be associated with the mediums uh, that yeah, uh, are on these uh, telephone lines, etc. So that was the second time that I said, oh no, not this mediumship, this is not how I experience it. And then I came here with the uh, SNU and I had, hey, hey. I thought, <laughs> now, now I getting this, this embedded, but I had also do it other first versa to accept what I was doing. So I agree with June, it was the other way around. Hmm. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for that wonderful contribution. Thank you. All right, David. Sorry, I'm always someone that has something to say. Now that's good. Now that's, what, that's what the discussion group is all about. <laughs> no, but uh, it's so interesting to, to follow what he said. You see, for me, for example, I mean, Simone, you, you know me when I was a baby, yes? So when I thought, no, really, really, uh, when I started, I was on this trance course with Eileen Mitchinson. Do you remember? Yes, I do. She lives. I, she I used mean, to live near me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, she was just like, I, I'm in awe. So, so it's really nice to have this discussion about guides. So, she did this um, trance demonstration one evening, and it was just said now that it starts in the mind. But I have to say, when I saw that trance demonstration for the first time, I was just in awe. There is a presence, there was, mm. there was a feeling in the room. It was beyond what this little lady could even create. You know what I mean? It's like you are sitting there and with your full heart, with every cell, you are listening to every word. And, and there is such an element Sorry, I'm getting so, I'm getting. No, uh, I'm, I'm it, happy actually, about that. I'm very it, happy about that, yeah. You know, it's like, it's like when you then see that kind of trance and such guides and what they create within the atmosphere, healing the same, how they mold and change that, then it is beyond our mind. It is something that has a physical mm -hmm. element to it. And at the moment, unfortunately, I am missing that moment where you can just sit in that presence that is created. And each and every one in the same room is in all. I hope I hope I make myself clear. Yeah, absolutely. No, I totally, I totally I totally get it. I don't know about everybody else, but I, I do. I think it's it's exciting. It's just so exciting. But more importantly, it it it, it enables an awakening within you. That's yes, part of that. Yeah. That's part of it. You know, it isn't just about words. It's more well, than it that. Is, and it goes beyond. It goes. Yeah. It it's awakens. It awakens that um, endeavor to say, do you know what? I want to know how that works. Mm. I want to I want to I want to be that person, even though maybe I will never be it because she was <laughs> exceptional. I have to say she was just awesome. But it, it's just like it. It brings it into reality where you then realize that guides are not just a construct of the mind. There is something tangible about yeah, it. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you, David. Robert, hi. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, I love this. Uh, I completely agree with what, what David does a lot more to guides than just like being like aspects of different aspects of the soul or uh, aspects of the mind. But I agree with John and Simone as well that it's, I think it's both. I think that there are aspects of maybe like, uh, I'm not going to any reincarnation here, but maybe like a, uh, maybe lives that my soul has had. Okay. Not lives that I've had before that are, what people may determine as being spirit guides when you know when it's really just your own soul that's guiding you and projecting another personality separate from yeah. yourself because when you think about it when, when you start off developing your mediumship uh and someone was to say to you that you are your own guide in theory then that could be quite a difficult concept for a lot of people to to kind of like come to terms with 
So I believe it's it's both that guides our aspects of our personality, aspects mm-hmm. of our self, higher self, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, but also separate, like uh, I always think that, that God or the Great Spirit. You know how many how many uh, characters or personalities can can be brought forward in in that kind of concept. So it's like there's something a lot higher guiding you, okay? Mm-hmm. That's that's given that's presenting itself in a way that's acceptable to you. Yeah, I okay? I, I go like, I would go along with that personally. It's, like a, it's like a much like. higher power, but it mm-hmm. presents itself in a manner that's acceptable. Yeah. And I, for a lot of people, we need that. We need that comfort and believing that there, there is something higher that's, mm-hmm. that's maybe like a spirit guide guiding us. And it's not just us in our own soul and personality and a kind of constructs of the mind. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes we don't have a lot of confidence that we could be our own guides. And I think it's, I think it's something that's, it's just the tip of the iceberg we're talking about it now. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's both. It's both us and the great spirit okay. in, in many different forms. Thank you. That's that's very valuable. Thank you very much. Um, Daniel, have you got your hand up? I mean, I can't tell by your wall wherever you are. Or oh, you've just moved. Okay. Is well, that a hand? Hand's not up, but I do want to add in. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I'm more everyone. psychic than I knew. Okay. You're very yeah. psychic. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm really uh, intrigued by a lot of what's being shared because for me, I bring, again, my culture into this. Uh, growing up, our, my culture, we have what we call ale um, briges or spirit guides, but more along the lines of spirit animals protectors and such <clears throat> and for me it's very as like the stories of like June and Marie spoke of knowing spirit guides from the beginning of their memories for me growing up I knew of other things that were in existence and if I were to narrow down as to what's the point in my culture that we share these stories or fables, if you will, with children or younger generations, the whole point is to help us to understand that we are more than the construct we tell ourselves we are. Um, If I were to live my life knowing that I have more protection than I realize, would I be more courageous or brave? If I were to live my life knowing that there is a force that's guiding my unfoldment, not controlling, guiding my unfoldment, would I be more willing to take a stand or to step into the spotlight, for example? And I feel that very similarly, this is where spirit guides, the point of them, you know, for me is to push myself beyond just the here and the now. It's so easy to just be concerned with, well, do I wear, I don't wear open toe shoes, but for example, do I wear open or closed toe shoes if I go outside? No, that may not be something that is very extravagant or uh, um, important, but yet it could be for where I'm attempting to, to develop or to unfold. So for me to know that beyond here and now, the little me or the big me that I might imagine that there's so much more to me. And if there's more to me, there's more to you. And if I start thinking in that way, then I start thinking beyond. And that allows me to be able to become more aware, more aware of myself, more aware of you, more aware of how I interact with the world. I'm strongly one who believes in personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I know I must participate and I recall in my life many times where I did not, and I would become very angry at these things I called alibrijes or spirit guides. Why haven't you fixed me yet? And, uh, wow. and, and that really has helped me to understand that I do play a role in my life. Yet, <clears throat> I also very much appreciate this topic we have this evening because 
it really also opens us up to the fact that there is more beyond our own limitations. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, Beverly. Hi. Hi, <clears throat> everyone. Um, my first experience with a spirit guide was at Arthur Finley, and I was in Lynn Cottrell's class. And I had my eyes closed to do a uh, trance uh, speaking for someone. And I thought Lynn was standing beside me. I could feel this woman beside me. And I thought, okay, she's helping me channel that energy. When I opened my eyes, Lynn was across the room and she came running over to me to say like, oh my gosh, your spirit guide was there. So that was my first introduction yeah. in 2019. Uh, the other time was I was in my own home channeling for a group and I could feel a gentleman come and sit on my lap. <laughs> and each time they come, my voice changes. Um, so I, I'm confused by that. I'm intrigued by it. But now when I do a trance session for a group, um, I'm bringing in different energies and it is a collective. So, and the response seems to be modified by what kind of question we've brought in and who's in the group. Mm -hmm. So I find that fascinating, but like Robert, I, I, I'm curious about the um, possibility of reincarnating and being my own spirit guide from other lifetimes. Mm -hmm. I'm new to spiritualism, so I'm not quite sure where you stand on reincarnation. It's just a personal opinion. There is no, there's no stand as such, you know, yeah. we, there's nothing in writing. We just, we're all free to believe what we want to believe, basically, you know, that's how it is. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so it suits me anyway. <laughs> All right, June. Hi, thank you very much, Beverly. Uh, June, can I offer Daniel a tiger? Because <laughs> um, I used to go to sleep at night lying on the tiger in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. It was my comfort, and I'll raise you, Mary Duffy. Oh, I remember, remember her. Mary Duffy. <laughs> Yes, very well. <clears throat> um, I mean, I have attended Eileen Mitchumson's transcensions, but Mary Duffy was the one that caught me. She didn't, she, she did the talk in the altered state, but the presence was still there. There was absolutely no doubt about that. Uh, did you know Mary Duffy? So I yeah, yeah, really yeah. and, and, and John knew her very well. They lived near each other. Yeah. Right. So that is what interested me at the time. Yeah. The presentation of, of the mediumship and the altered state, but still eyes open and walking about the platform. Mm -hmm. So like David, I would like to be like that. That's what I decided. <laughs> I want to do that. So I'm not a physical medium. At least I don't ever believe that I am, and I'm told that I'm not. But I oh, do like <laughs> I do like the way that Mary Duffy did it. Hmm. So as for being my own guide, I find that a little difficult because I find that what I say and my opinions have been influenced by those who work with me. Because as a child, my mind must have been quite open. But as I've gone on in these years and uh, been in the SNU a long time, I have taken upon the understanding and beliefs of those who work with me. So sometimes I can be a little controversial. I like uh, reincarnation, like the way you define things in this world. And uh, that is not what this subject's about. But I'm saying that I take upon what they have taught me. And if I don't like it, I tell them so. Mm -hmm. Because I say, I don't understand that one. Can you put it a different way? Usually they do until I understand it. Um, mm. it's, it's not that I am my own guide. I have become a person who understands the value of being guided because there is always somebody who knows more than I do because my knowledge comes from a different point. I observe the world. I watch the energy. I know how it works, but I don't know about people. That's so that's how it worked for me. Yeah. So, I am not my own guide. I have an imagination 
but I know when it is my imagination and I know when it's not. Okay. Okay, thanks, June. That's great. Thanks. David. I think it's very interesting and I, I agree with everybody and disagree with everybody, honestly. <laughs> no, but I think what, where we go wrong sometimes is like, for me, there are two pairs of shoes. One pair is what do I believe about my guides, my concepts? And then the other pair of shoes is what do I present to the world, okay? And, and sometimes what you see that is presented to the world, a guide speaks and you listen to what is said. And then you think, oh my, and this sounds maybe very disrespectful, but it is not the spirit world. It can't be, because it, it is, it's not clever enough. It is not inspired enough. So I think there are two different pairs of shoes. What do we present to the world to make a judgment for them to judge and say the spirit world is real, okay? And then my own world, my own circle. And then for example, now with, with, with doing services, for example, when we go into that moment of the address, I know we shouldn't be in the trance state. So now we have to define what is a trance state. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And we're not discussing that, but um, everybody who has done an address and goes and flows within this inspiration that comes maybe from within first. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden we reach that point where the spirit world comes in and you say something and you think, that's not my opinion. How dare I say such a thing? I never believed that. Then I believe you can judge and say, this is not my mind because my mind would never be controversial mm -hmm. against myself, would it? So mm -hmm. I think we also need to bring back that critical element that is not destructive, but constructive and say, let's, let's bring that greatness of all these great mediums back. Mm -hmm. So my opinion though, two different shoes. I don't know how you- Yeah, that's great. That sounds good. I just want to quickly say, you just reminded me of um, a great teacher, and I know you would have known him, Glyn Edwards, yeah. um, who, who must have, who taught the, the Arthur Finney College for many, many years, and he was worldwide. And I remember him telling me a story once about how he tried to deny the spirit world. And every time he saw this, this presence, he would say, you know, you're a figment of, this is a figment of my imagination. I do not believe this, you know. And then one day he went into the trance state and was aware of a very clear image and the, the control turned to him and said, I am a figment of your imagination now, yeah. you know? Um, and, and it always made me realize then that, you know, how hard we work to prove things to ourselves mm -hmm. and how hard it must be for the spirit world because, you know, to, to say, you know, just make it easy. When, when you know at the end of it, they're just trying to say to you, just make it easy for yourself, you know, don't battle. But I know that for me, when I first, you know, was aware of guides and at the time I came into this movement, that's all anybody ever really talked about were guides and helpers and somebody's, somebody's um, guide was a lot better than yours and so on, you know. And then, you know, how they how people were in those days. And, and now, you know, I, I know that how they've taught me is that when I when we focus on just the one mind, it they they taught me, and this is just personal, that it's like walking into a community center where you've got 300 people that you that are there for you, but you only see one. And you're ignoring all the others that are there for you. And that met that that changed my way uh, of looking at spirit guides. It was like, OK, and now I don't look at the individual. I'm not I, in when I work with people on a one to one, especially when I'm doing spiritual assessments. I don't look for um, a guide. I look for the collective consciousness and I also look for the influence that comes from that. Say it may be in art, in mediumship, whatever. But, the, but just the influence I'm interested in, because for me, this, the idea or the concept of guides and helpers is very similar to mainstream education. 
you know, you go into your first school with a set of teachers that take you to your next school and so on. And at each time you've reached a particular point in your understanding, those minds leave you because they've, they've played their part and others then join with you. You wouldn't teach an infant university maths is what I'm saying. So that, that makes sense to me, but I don't expect it to make sense to anybody else, but it just sits comfortably with me. So how about you, Robert? Yeah, this might be a bit of a curveball, but uh, if you think about uh, the vastness of what like, creation in the universe, etc., and uh, you think about guides, and we always we always kind of try to give them or look like, attempt to give them like a a human kind of like appearance. Uh, inner minds, perhaps. So I'm just wondering what the what everyone's thoughts are on. Uh, I'm not talking about aliens or anything like that. But uh, do you think that spirit guides are limited to being people that have either lived as humans before, or taken another form, or been a life? being any kind of life whether that be you know like an animal or, or whatever mm. or someone from somewhere else i just wondered what people's thoughts were yeah. on it or does anyone have any thoughts on that at all just coming in there you know to kick it off you know my understanding and my belief in it is that we're communicating with human beings so it could be human beings at different stages of the spiritual existence so, for instance, we know with Silver Birch that if you research mm -hmm. the teachings of Silver Birch, we know that basically the source of that intelligence that gave us that information through transmediumship, we don't know who that was, what entity that was. But, but so, excuse me coming in there, John, because this is one of my bugbears, because, you know, throughout the, the, the books that call Silver Birch, it, it's, it's never one individual. That's what's stated. It's mm -hmm. a collective consciousness, yeah. And and then and then they that we call it he, Silver Birch, which drives me nuts because one minute we're told it's a collective, and the next minute we're told it, it's an individual. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, anyway, really, how that's explained yeah. is that you know people weren't satisfied with that. You know, yeah. as to say we're we're communicating. You know, the the questions were asked in circle. Well, who are you? What are you? And, and they were saying, well, it's no longer important for me to remember whether I was a man or a woman or where I lived and what I did. But I know that's not good enough for you because you're going to want evidence. You want to know who this is. So they then used, as the story goes, mm. a spirit in the spirit world to act as a medium. And that medium was Silver Birch. Now, that makes sense to me because I would like to think that as we evolve in the spirit, we get to the point where we are beyond who we are. We don't need to remember ourselves as Simone or John or whatever, because surely in a spiritual progress, and we know there's no such thing as time and spirit, but over a period, we're going to have reached a point in our consciousness and our spiritual development where we are beyond who we are. And we don't need to recall that and recollect that. Mm -hmm. So I think essentially we are communicating with an intelligence and energy and that energy is constantly evolving and that energy will be able to come back to us and inspire us and guide us and in many different ways but you know i very firmly believe we don't just have one supporter there in the spirit world there are many and that they will change as as we adapt and we change and that makes sense because here in this world we often turn to many different people for help and guidance. Mm -hmm. And as life goes on, we move on and turn to other people. And I think it's exactly the same in the spirit world. Okay, thank you. Juliet, hi. Hi. Um, I, I, I would like to react, but not especially to, uh, to Robert, but more generally. The, the term, uh, and, and this has not been introduced like that before, but I'm referring to what June said and Marie-Therese, 
uh, the feeling of, um, of, of being a person, a human being, living in, you know, having access to two different kinds of worlds was, uh, was what I experienced when I was a child. Um, I could make myself invisible, but could I? I mean, I was everywhere physically, but I could be in a room and nobody saw me because I didn't want them to see me. It was like a protective shield was around me. And when I grew up, I still could do that. I still can. But there came a certain moment in my life when I thought, this is too difficult for me as a human being because um, I have a physical body, I'm studying, I'm doing all kinds that normal people do. So I have to shut off. I have to close that veil or whatever it was. So I entered into the physical world, but it was like I had lost a limp. So I just limped on. And uh, then again, I had a normal life. I had a job, I had a husband, I had children, but there was still something missing. And I started to investigate. What is it that I'm missing? Because I, I didn't know, but I still had this missing limp. So um, I started to pray for guidance, for help. I'm not brought, I wasn't brought up in, in, in a religious way, but still I started to pray for guidance, for help. And then there was this period in my life where I was overwhelmed with energies, with forms that scared me, animal forms, human forms that wanted to invade me, so to say, because when I look back to that period, I, was, I became very angry. And that was to save myself from becoming mad. And um, at one point I said, I don't, want, I don't want all this, I can't manage it. I really can't. You have to leave me alone. I am Julia Joan and I have to find out who I am. And I'm curious. So that's when my journey really started. My journey into discovering what it was, who they were. Um, and when I was more, more quiet, I said, okay, okay, I need assistance. I need assistance from you to function properly. And I remember that there were two energy forms and I cannot, I cannot describe the face, the, the physical form. It is only energies that were next to me to protect me, to help me, to guide me. And I thought it was important to find names for them. Who are you? Why can't I find a picture of you? Why don't you show yourself to me? And I had to stop that. And I had to accept that it was not necessary and it wasn't. So there I was functioning in the physical world, very much related to the other side of the fail so to say, to make it a bit romantic. And um, I discovered spiritualism, where I could find the time to study. I could really, you know, I fit it, I fit it into those seven principles my way, with my responsibility for the whole process. Meeting people who still didn't understand who I was, who I am, where I was going. Well, I didn't know it either, but I have always refused to give away responsibility because I have also been brought up as a therapist. I have to take responsibility, not only for myself, but also for the people that I want to work with because I found it as a kind of a calling 
to help find to, to help others find their way in this strange world that we have to function within. And then at Arthur Findlay College, I had this wonderful encounter where there was really something going on around me. And uh, in a session where a guide really, and that's what it, it was a form that I saw. He was pushed towards me to work with me. And he didn't want that. He didn't want to come and work with me. Can you imagine that? And I was kind of amused because my two main guides that had been with me always, they were still next to me. And he was given the message, you have to work with this woman. You should work with her. She's the character that you have to work with. Is this a bit arrogant? I don't know. But he was told, if you don't, it's not a problem. But then you have to go back to the other side and remain there until you have grown up. Mm. And then very reluctantly, he decided, okay, because he wanted to work with someone on earth. Is this a strange story or isn't it? For me, it was a reality and he still is with me. And now, not, oh, not too long ago, with the intervenience, intervenience of another medium, he communicated to me that I shouldn't be so stubborn because now it's the time he has learned so much. Now is the time for him to really guide me. Now, what do you all think about that? I mean, I'm 75 years old, wow. right? <laughs> and there he is, this young bloke. And, and he has been running along with me all the time, learning from me, teaching me, guiding me, guiding me into going to fitness because his physical body had to function in a way that he liked it. I had to become tougher. I had to be strong. Mm -hmm. I had physically strong. I mean, what's going on here? So it just, I, it just sounds to me like, you know, maybe some, you know, being a spirit guide, maybe they, they have to draw the short straw. That's how it sounds to me. Yeah, <laughs> Especially yeah. if they choose me. <laughs> Yeah, or me. <laughs> but then, you know, at, at some point, if for me, it is, it, it is the truth. Yeah, no, of course. That's, there, that's, there's, that's there's, your truth. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, but, but then really, it is, uh, how do you call it? When you're equal? When, yeah. when you're, you know, um, to say, you, well, what, what's the, what's the word? What's the word in English? Uh, that you are... Um, Balance. Equilibrium. Yeah. Equilibrium. Yes, yeah. thank you. Thank yeah. you, John. And that's for me, it's perfect. Mm. Because I could never, I could never leave, uh, I, I, I would never be, be able to draw my responsibility. Mm. But then oh, this I... way, with the aid of a wonderful medium present here tonight, this happened only, what was it, a week ago, a week and a half ago? It is, it is fantastic. So for me, it's no question. There are spirit guides. Great. It okay. is great. Thanks, Juliet Jan. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Diana, thank you. Diana. Good evening, everybody. Hello, Diana. Uh, you mentioned the question about animal guides. I've done a little bit shamanism through my development. And apparently when you have animals entering, I mean, you, you can either do remote viewing, you can have dead animals who come and speak to you, or you do psychic readings, but you can also get in shamanism, animals who come and guide you because they are a, a perspective of your soul, like your character. 
Okay. Just a little help for anybody who doesn't know about that. Hmm. So when you do a meditation, it could be that it that you can go deeper into uh, an explanation and find maybe a type of character and then uh, look at the animal, what it does mm. like to be guided a little bit as well. And there's lots of information on the- Thank internet. you. Yeah. Thanks, Diana. Thank you. Um, David, I, th I saw your hand up earlier. Did you want to say a few words? Uh, I only showed because I was very intrigued what John said about uh, silver birch and he, she, I mean, you said that as well, because I had the same problem with red cloud, for example. Oh, yeah. And when you read all these old books, they're very Christian based, although mm. their concepts are very Christian based. And then it, it, it made, it didn't make sense. Spiritualism, the new religion. And then we're talking about Christian based um, issues, stuff. And then while reading um, red cloud, there was the answer because I always thought it was a morphing of the medium's mind with with the medium's um, belief system that would have um, how do you say um, can't think of the word but but would have altered the purity of what is said. Mm. But then what Red Cloud said is that they communicate in a way that the people of that age understood them. And therefore, they brought all that Christian-based interpretation mm. in, not because it was what they wanted to bring, but because it was the mind of the people that were able yeah. to understand it. And yeah. for example, when we have a personality as a guide who is funny, who draws you in, I mean, what do you create? Energy. So I can understand why there is individuality. Because I want to listen to mm. a charismatic person. Yeah. So I can understand why that is created, even though behind mm. the scenes is a much higher power. Mm. And we can call it God. Yeah. I, I, I go along with that. It, it, there's just a part of me that wonders, please don't think I've got an answer because I haven't, but I just wonder how much we, uh, how much we read archetypes you know, like, and, you know, when we're looking at, say, a face, for instance, that we believe is a, a guide or a help or whatever you want to, or an influence, whatever you want to say, how, how has, has the mind, uh, through its re repetition, keep repeating this, that same face? And, and what concerns me is that pe I, I feel a lot of people miss the point of an archetype because it's showing you the influence that's there at that time, maybe not a direct copy of the face or the features of one individual, but a collective consciousness that is there at that moment to help you in that particular way. Again, I don't have an answer, it's just a thought. All right, and just going to June finally. I think we're just coming to the end now, but oh. June. I'm confused by your archetypes. I've never looked oh, at it like that. Right. I was, uh, that's, you were, You added that, but I was going to go back to the fact that there's no point when I was an infant in my cot and presenting me with an image I could not understand. At yes, that. yes, which is what David was saying, yeah. Yes, that's right, yeah. but later on, the gentleman who walks with me and has been the companion all my life, I know what he looks like energetically now. Mm. I have seen him mm. in that energetic form. Right. He still presents himself to others as the original mm. image. As I said, I was brought up in a conventional orthodox religion. So there's no point in giving me anybody I could not comprehend. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, so, I understand. Yeah. So I would Thank support you. that. Yeah. But archetypes, now you've got me concerned. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll leave that with you, June. Okay. An archetype, <laughs> but it's still a human being presenting an emotional situation. So even spirit guides have an emotional journey if yeah. those have gone before us, yeah. and they must complete, complete their emotional journey. Yeah. So don't <laughs> you say they always come in love? <laughs> well, for goodness sake. 
they're coming also to complete their own emotional journeys yeah. and that is giving us assistance okay <laughs> thanks june thank you carolyn yes just quickly um the first group I got was actually, as you were saying, it was a collective group. They call themselves a Council of Twelve. And I don't know if it's 12 or 144. It's just it's an it's a collective group. Yeah. Uh, and I have been told that when I go back to spirit, I am part of them. And I don't know if I am. I don't even I don't tend to inquire too much about who they are. Um, but I know somebody who also works with them who's analyzed you know, about 12 of them. So we all have different perspectives. Yes. The next two that I got, I was introduced to at Arthur Finney College. Uh, one was Eileen Davis who said, you know, do you, ha you have a nun who wants to work with you? And we find I found out who she was and she did exist in the 17th century. And then the other one was uh, Martin uh, Colclough. And um, instead of talking about the we in the collective, it suddenly popped up an I and it's like, I, anyway, he, he, he saw an image. Um, otherwise, I would have just thought, oh, it's just me making it up. Hmm. But because okay. a third person saw it, it was like, OK, so yeah, I, seem no, to have yeah. a, I seem to have a collective and I also seem to have two individuals. But I think the two individuals also are probably part of the collective, but I'm not sure. OK, well, if it, if it, it just to make it more confusing for you, I actually believe that you have hundreds of influences that work with you not yeah. just two or three so I'll leave that with you Marie Therese do you want to say something yeah yeah to add to that um yeah. my stepdad has passed a long time ago and he was a not to uh, be arrogant but he was a very famous anesthesiologist and um I'm working with healing and I'm now doing the HES but he has joined me so he okay. he is he has told through a medium that um, he is really surprised how it works, the healing sessions I do with the Hess, and he is coming in all the time to help there. And so he has a new way of learning on, on that kind, on, on the other field, on the field, to learn also about this on energetic mm. way. So it's very nice how these things working. So yeah. that I want to add uh, to it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much, Marie Therese. OK, I know we're coming to the end of our session tonight and I, I, I know I can speak on behalf of John and Daniel um, how interesting it's been and lovely to hear, you know, everybody's or not everybody's, but, you know, those of us, those of us that have spoken, lovely to hear different ideas, different concepts. That's what it's all about for me. Um, our next meeting um, our next philosophy evening is on Wednesday, the 16th of February. And our as subject for that time is how do we prepare for the event we call death? OK, so I'd like you to think about that for the next time. All right. But so thank a nice you. Nice cheery subject yes. for you all to think about. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe we don't prepare. Who cares? You know. <laughs> But we can leave it like that. But anyway, thank you all so much for your valuable contribution this evening or today, wherever, whatever time it is where you are. And um, and, and it's been a very, very um, a, a, a good and deep discussion for me anyway. And uh, I, I look forward to seeing you all. And I know I could speak on behalf of John and Daniel. I want to say thank you so much for your valuable contributions. And we look forward to seeing you next month. OK, please join us again. Thanks again. See you next month. Everybody. Yeah.